Ladies and gentlemen, faculty, family members, and fellow graduates, good evening. My name is Bill Hussein, but my peers know me simply as Bill. Um, there we go. <laughs> okay, tonight we're all gathered here to celebrate success. Success, which was the result of sitting through never ending classes. But we made it through. Ow! <laughs> and it's been memorable, to say the least. In these years, many have played important roles in getting us to this point. Parents, siblings, friends, classmates, and even pets. <laughs> My cat probably knows most of the drugs we had to memorize. <laughs> I sometimes imagine the cat as one of those cats in those chemistry memes with the bow tie, glasses. <laughs> well, that's what you get when you stay up late, repeating drug names and mechanism of actions to a cat. So, <laughs> okay. As important as pets were for our success, there's another group that played arguably the most important role in our success today. This evening, I'm honored to give the toast on behalf of our graduating class to our faculty. I'd like to begin by first thanking Cindy, who is our academic advisor, and we don't really see much of Cindy throughout the year. Last time I remember seeing Cindy was when I was losing my mind about what class to pick. And it was the day before registration, procrastinating, procrastination at its finest. Two years ago, I didn't know what major I wanted to do. So I went to Cindy. I told her what my end goal was. Did she lay out all the options for me? She's helped me, and I'm sure she's helped most of you get to this point here today. So thank you, Cindy. Also deserving of our thanks are our professors. Unfortunately, some of our professors weren't able to join us today, and they deserve to be acknowledged for all that they have done. It is said that an excellent school is surrounded by excellent teachers who devote their hard work and wisdom for the benefit of students. This certainly was the case with our professors. Excellent professors such as Dr. Landon and Dr. Fisher, who were always there to offer help. This past semester, Dr. Fisher and Dr. Landon taught us a class on genomics. It's a fairly new class, so there was a little bit of a uh, learning process for our professors in terms of structuring the class. But I love how upfront they were with it, as they told us from day one. And we worked together to make it an enjoyable class. And it was. This was made possible because of how open they were to accepting our feedback. And that's a defining characteristic of an excellent professor. So thank you, Dr. Landon. <laughs> Another excellent professor that comes to mind is Dr. Lee. In our labs with Dr. Lee, one aspect that resonated with me was how he would never answer any of the questions he asked. <laughs> Let me tell you, he asked a lot of questions. He would simply say, I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> At the time, we just wanted to know the answer so we could leave the lab early. <laughs> but now that I think back at that, it's because of those I don't knows that we tried harder. Dr. Lee got us to, he pushed us to excel. And it's because of moments like these that I'm grateful for. So thank you, Dr. Lee. Another thing, Dr. Lee also rewarded his students. I wasn't part of this class, but apparently he took his students for poutine and beers in the afternoon. <laughs> not, not many students can say they've had beers with the prof, so there's that. Dr. Desang is another prof who, by and large, pushed us to the <laughs> In one of our classes, we had to do a group project which was comprised of a presentation and an essay in conjunction and all he gave us was just a topic and no guidelines. He wanted us to just go out and be creative. Well, my group, my group and I did that project about four times. This is because after each of the first three times, we would go to him and he would say, it's not good enough, start again. Now you're probably wondering what happened the fourth time that we succeeded. 
Well, we didn't go to them a fourth time. <laughs> we handed in whatever we came up with, and it turns out he loved it. So there's that. Dr. Sang pushed us all into doing something we thought was impossible. We made him smile. Uh, it, most, for the most part, it was our fellow classmate Emmanuel's passionate speech, the same way Dr. Desang tried every morning to inspire students. I say try because it's 8.30 in the morning, let's be honest. We're all just trying to stay awake, let alone be inspired. That is if we make it to class on time, something as most of you know I struggled with. Most days I just tell myself I'll try again tomorrow. <laughs> hey, I wasn't the only one that missed class. Dr. Lu missed the whole class. <laughs> and you better know it was way too early. See, all of our professors have their unique way of teaching us. All the teaching us. For example, Dr. Cash got Dane to perform an interpretive dance explaining the concept. Dane, if you get time today, I'm sure everybody would love to see that dance. <laughs> I found Dr. Gopal to be, the, to be very entertaining. And by entertaining, I mean his lectures, not his exam questions. <laughs> It was his creativity and how he explained the symptoms and conditions. He would create scenarios where he'd put himself and talk about it in third person. It was usually him going to Toronto and would have the most unexpected of conditions. Usually on the plane, yeah. Usually on the plane, it's... That's one way to keep a student awake during these classes, I guess. Yeah. Another entertaining prop that comes to mind and is perhaps the class favorite, Dr. Ashok. <laughs> One of the most memorable things I remember Dr. Ashok saying in regards to drugs was, a little bit is okay, but don't do too much. <laughs> there were many other things that he said, which I cannot recall at this moment, but all I can remember is just sitting in that class and just laughing way too hard for someone in a pharmacology class. As most of you know, this past year was Dr. Ashok's last year with U of S. He accepted a job in Ottawa. I speak for the class when I say this. We wish him the best of luck, and we know that he will do a great job in whatever initiative he takes. I'm glad to ha have had him as one of our professors. There are many other profs that deserve recognition, such as Dr. Howland, Dr. Sawicki, Dr. Shangis, and many others, without whom we wouldn't be here today. I could go on about all of them and how they helped us that well. But unfortunately, the fist, you have to blame the fist bump committee because they only allowed, allotted me five minutes. And I think it's been over that already. So uh, I'll keep it short. I'd like to end up with something a historian named Henry Adams once said. A teacher affects eternity. He can never tell where his influence stops. When I look around this room, I see my graduating class comprised of brilliant students with so much potential. Over these last few years, our professors have influenced us be the best versions of ourselves, and we will forever, forever be grateful to them for that. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in raising your glass to toast to the faculty members of the Physiology and Pharmacology for all that they have done for the graduating class of 2016. <laughs> <laughs>